everybody, welcome back to the HCT Winter Championship. I'm TJ, joined by the Admiral. That's admirable. I'm dancing. <laughs> you you know are why? you are dancing away, my friend. Do you know why? Why? Because we're in the top eight. It's in the top eight, and you want to know another reason why? Well, why I'm dancing, or why we're in the top eight? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Hit me with it. Because we're about to send another player to the World Championship. Woo! Yeah, it's going to be Roger versus Definition. And dancer. since, uh, unlike a couple of the other quarterfinal matchups, neither of these players have qualified for the World Championship. What? That's unusual. Yet. It is unusual. <laughs> it seems like it is. So the winner of this matchup will go on uh, to Worlds. But this is a very, very, very difficult matchup for Definition. And there's one reason why. Uh <laughs> I see a lot of reasons why. Why well, tell me one, your one reason? I see one glaring reason why. And okay. that's that definition has Odd Warrior, and Roger has four decks that do well, okay, three decks that do very well against Odd Warrior, and one of those is banned. Uh correct. Um I, I do agree that this is an extremely difficult uh, matchup for definition. I, I think ideally definition would have banned something other than Death Rattle Hunter, but Roger's Death Rattle Hunter in particular is built super greedy. Double Nerubian Unraveler, double Charge Devil Soar, one copy of Candleshot, no mind control tech, double Stitch Tracker. His entire lineup has gone the full greed route against control decks. It is very much a control buster lineup. And even down to the even Warlock, there's two Nerubian Unravelers in that one. Um, it's, a, it's a matchup that is definitely extremely difficult for definition. Uh, but he does have some of his own cards that really can change uh, the way a lot of this looks. And even down to the Odd Warrior in particular, he's brought a copy of Big Game Hunter. He's got an Azalina Soul Thief in here. And he's got two Faceless Manipulators with two Carnivorous Cubes. Definition has brought a slower lineup, but by the very metric of itself has gone a bit greedier uh, on the choices as well. So there is a possibility that Definition gets through, but it's going to require some, some ingenuity and some good fortune if that's going to happen. Yeah, I would uh, definitely agree with that statement. Um, but there is a, a weakness in Roger's lineup, too, and I would say that it's the even Warlock. It kind of, you know, doesn't fit super well into that lineup. We talk about even Warlock as a fourth deck a lot and how you can kind of tech it to be better against the things that you expect in the field. That's where the double Nerubian Raveler uh, comes in uh, for Roger. But if there is a point of contention for definition in this series. It's going to be trying to capitalize on that even Warlock with all of his decks. Right, and I, and I really think that's where Roger uh, may have forgotten one little thing, which was that if you're going to play a Control Buster lineup, Druid's definitely one of the decks you need to hit super hard. And he has not included a Skulking Geist in any of the decks that he's brought. The Death Rattle Hunter doesn't need that card. It's going to beat the crap out of Druid most of the time. Uh, Quest Rogue is a very aggressive deck, but he's only got one fan of Knives in there. That's another uh, way that you could suffer is just to spreading plague setups where you have a limited number of Phantom Knives and aren't necessarily able to get the job done. He's, again, he's not super worried about it because he's got Lab Recruiter uh, in the Quest Rogue deck. But with that even Warlock, there is no way to stop Naturalize from happening outside of Nerubian and Raveler and hope that the mana uh, cost increase is going to stop Definition from having a clean turn. And when you have Naturalizes on the other side, you cannot play the, uh, the game plan of blowing up the naturalizes with Skulking Geist and then unleashing threats. That's not a possibility anymore. Uh, and so you have to play the Mountain Giants instead. It's still favorable for Roger, I would say, but uh, there are some situations where he can get blown out by just a bunch of removal spells in a row. Yeah, and the reason why we're talking about other matchups is because this one is one of the toughest for definition. Uh, does not have much agency in this game because Roger, now granted, he did struggle with a, with a fatigue matchup yesterday with this deck specifically but maybe didn't have fatigue in mind. With this one, you kind of have to, because yeah. you have that lap recruiter in the deck, he's already got Valera in his hand. The way you win this matchup is just complete attrition. You don't die, you infinite lap recruiter, you make your deck just <laughs> basically vicious skill hides, lap recruiters, and elven minstrels to be able to shuffle draw, shuffle draw, shuffle draw, and heal all along the way. Yeah, I, I am a little bit curious to see um, what a card like Azalina could do in the matchup, uh, because I have at times played Odd Warrior with Azalina in it and come pretty darn close to turning the corner on some of those situations. Um, Definition doesn't have that in hand right now, but if he picks that up, you know, the timing of when that card hits is very important. 
Um, it's difficult to, to really use properly, but there are some situations where uh, you can do some shenanigans of your own uh, with a card like that. And then also kind of rolling through these turns, Definition will have some pressure going. Uh, has Direhorn Hatchling, has Carnivorous Cube, and that's usually enough to at least apply some pressure to Roger. And his deck doesn't handle mid-range minions that well. It just gives him a lot of time to be able to, to make quest progress. So you could see an early vanish as well, something that could be a plus one for Definition. Yeah. Yeah. Like all the points you made and I think early pressure is something that you mentioned, but something that's really important because you have to force the quest rogue to not play their ideal turns. But Roger has so many shadow dances. Right. That's he's got Salsi Deccan. He's got a way to complete the quest if he's not taking damage. So that's even more reason why definition should uh, try and go aggressive here. That's really the juxtaposition of Quest Rogue, is you want to pressure it so it doesn't have its ideal turns, but one of its ideal turns is when you moderately pressure it. <laughs> Very much like how Warrior does. Moderately pressure. It's a weird situation to be in. I have at times been known to attack with Super Collider as well when I'm getting close to uh, potentially killing my opponent. Definition, however, is not anywhere close to that. It's a really strange feeling when you arrive at that point where you're like, am I really about to do this? And you think and you think and you go, all right, five mana lights justice it is. <laughs> I wonder. Not even because lights justice has an extra charge. Oh, gosh, it's even worse. Yeah. It does threaten a lot, though. And, you know, I, I have to say that I am not 100% confident in Roger's quest rogue play. Reason being is because um, yesterday he played a matchup against Bunny Hopper. Bunny Hopper fatigued Roger with even Paladin. Now it was fantastically played by Bunny Hopper, but with Labracooter in your deck, that's almost never a situation you should find yourself in. And it, it was kind of just an unfortunate series for him overall. And I think he's got to kind of shake that off and try and focus on this. It's a much more linear game plan than even Paladin. You often don't necessarily have to worry about staying alive as much as against even Paladin. So you can focus on your win conditions and focus on making sure you're sequencing the late game with lab recruiters is on point. That That's really where, where my head comes in is I think Roger had just never uh, really run into that circumstance ever occurring where fatigue certainly was not on his mind uh, going into that matchup. Oh. Definition plays the Zola on the Gluttonous Ooze. Yes, the reason I like this is because uh, Definition wants to have counterplay uh, to Valera when it hits, and one of the things you can do is you can shut off Southsea Deckhand's charge effect by oozing the weapon after Valera has happened. You take away the weapon, and they can never make one again. So Roger, if he has to at some point use Stone Tusk Boar or loses that, the only thing he's relying on at that point is Southsea Deckhand for charge, which will lose it if the weapon's not there. I don't think that's necessarily a big part of the win condition, though, is shutting off charge damage. Because the rogue can just go infinite if they play it correctly. Well, what card in here is a big part of the win condition? Shuffling a 5-mana 6-9 into your deck. Which you just did. He could have Zola the, the Direhorn Hatchling. I like the, I like the use more. Okay. It's also just more efficient. Maybe you just play it now. Start beating him up. You okay. Get a five five from your tank master. This is eight, 13, well, 16, 7. That's a lethal setup. It, I mean, it's a banish. It's a yeah, but but it's a lethal setup. That's probably exactly what Definition was thinking about. Yeah, uh, not he's the thinking he's gonna, that I just he's said. He's thinking his opponent's not going to really play any minions. He's going to be able to push a little bit of damage. He's going to Tink Master Overspark one of his minions into a Devil Soar. Uh, if that's what he was thinking, that's some next level stuff right there. That's some some deep multi turn math. Hmm. I'm going to add an asterisk next to what I said. I still mean it. But that's not what Definition was thinking about. He was thinking about beating him up if he got the right roll on. Yeah, he was just uh, thinking about, master. I'm going to do as much damage as possible. If I happen to piece together a lethal setup, cool. <laughs> Quest complete. Whoa, he's not vanishing. He's going to take a lot of damage.
Well, now I've you've officially made me very interested in the game now. <laughs> Couple things to note about the way Roger has constructed uh, this Quest Rogue deck. There is no Zeliax, which has been pretty much a staple in most Quest Rogue lists as of late. He's already used also one copy of the Vicious Scale Hide, so his healing is limited in the deck. He does have Quest Complete. He's got a lot of bounce effects. Still has Lab Recruiter, so he can get those shuffled back in. But that is something to note: is that this four health. You cannot. It's now nine. This nine health is nine health for a while until he finds that second vicious scale hide. With seventeen of, cards left in deck. It's the perfect card here. I'm, I'm not entirely certain. Face is pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe Doctor Boom might have been the best card in Definition's deck at this point. Yeah, I would say so. I think there's a possibility it was, uh, you know, something along the lines of Azelina, like trading in these you know, atrocious looking cards in your hand for, you know, just maybe something of substance. Mm -hmm. However, Azelina might not have been the best draw because it just could be so much better later on. Like, that's also a possibility. Roger is really being pushed into a situation where he needs to vanish, though. Like, I'm honestly kind of surprised he didn't vanish on the previous turn. Yeah, well, he has to vanish here. He's dead if he doesn't. Unless this Mimic Pod picks up something that can stave off some of the pressure from the board. So this is where you play the double lab recruiter then. I want you and you. I, I don't know. This is the this is the position he found himself in yesterday. So playing the la double lab recruiter earlier does just bank yourself fatigue early on in the game, but it also makes your deck. it also makes your average draw pretty weak because unless he picks up vicious scale hide or elven neutral which are the two other cards that i like to shuffle in then he if it what like what if he draws a lab recruiter now i, I don't know but definition's beaten down the door i don't think i've ever really seen a game go quite seemingly this favorably oh wow he has no minion pressure oh, well thing. that uh, i mean do you need minion pressure when you pick up a pair of saps from this But if you're having to sap against <laughs> against the odd, I'm, I'm probably just prep vanish again. Honestly, like you've you've reached the point of the game where minions are now yes, the most important yeah. thing. You have plenty of time to get tempo. It is a lot closer than I anticipated, though. Like I do feel like I should be more excited than I am being right now. But it's just because it's rather anticlimactic, I guess. Where it's just yeah. like you know, playing a four, six, and a five, five at a time. Uh, and definition is just gonna do it again. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not exactly exciting, is I, I guess uh, the reasoning. It's just kind of like, is this good enough? It's it's a check every turn. But this is where I now start getting a bit fearful for definition. Is now it's uh, you know basically two more vanishes in Roger's hand with the sap and the uh, the Valera card that you get every turn, the Shadow Reflection. This copies you know whatever thing you last played. Yeah. Roger does still have a ways to go on actually you know, killing Definition, though, too. So, you know, the fact that Definition's been so aggressive, it's going to force Roger in a position where he has to play defense. Yeah. And that's really what aggression buys you is that disruption effect. Honestly, with this pan out, even though there's 15 cards left in Roger's deck, I still think that this is a, a fatigue situation. There's two. There's three lab recruiters still in the deck. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, his win condition isn't killing Definition. His win condition is... Get to the late game stages. Uh, I see what you're saying. Fend off his his direhorn matriarchs, and eventually just run him out of cards. Okay. That that's what I think his win condition is. So yes, it's fatigue, but Roger will, if he plays it correctly, never hit fatigue. The benefit of these saps as well is that he's burning cards from definition. Whew, definition. He oh, it stops himself too. He's ready to deviate from the play. And instead hesitates and tells himself, hey, look, focus on this. This is a pretty important turn. Yeah. And definitely agree. Very important. So definition, the things that he has to keep in mind is, one, needs to hold on to removal 
for when Vicious Scale Hide comes down. Because if he removes Vicious Scale Hide from the equation and Roger doesn't get to shuffle them back into his deck, then all healing is gone. And he can focus on, hey, if I get Dr. Boom and just start chipping away with the three damage hero power when I get it, or get some kind of immediacy with Whoa. damage. That Mimic Pod draw. This is a big Mimic Pod. <laughs> well, it's got another one coming too, so. All right, South Sea Deckhand, that's good. Sick. Vicious Scale Hide, maybe? You Sick. Brewmaster, okay. Well, now Roger's probably on the, let's figure out how to beat up my opponent plan. Yeah. Still, um, like, reckless flurry that he has to worry about, but he can keep pushing damage to the face see definition. and brewing back. The next sap gets played to the Mimic Pod sap. So that tells me definition, um, you know, has not burdened himself with hand tracking, which is an extremely difficult thing when you have so many other things to focus on and the stakes that are in place. Um, there's a lot of moving parts to the decks and the way they work. It, it lets me know that Definition has not been doing hand tracking, uh, but is perhaps still hand reading. Um, so that is that is a factor to consider as well. Drink with me, friend. <laughs> so next turn, Roger has 16 damage lined up with South Sea Deckhand, Shadow Step, Youthful Brewmaster, and the Shadow Reflection. Yep. Draws one of those six nines. That takes three attacks to get through. So there's no saps, no vanishes. No saps, no vanishes. So those are gone. Ooh. So Roger's got to get through the, this, these minions the old-fashioned way. Now it takes two attacks to get through. And finds Zola. I think that Zola is probably going to be enough to start ending this. Yeah, can double South Sea Deckhand. Wait, no, yeah, yeah, he can double mm -hmm. South Sea Deckhand. That Phantom Knives is uh, the Shadow Reflections Phantom Knives, and then Zola back to still keep holding on to a charge minion. And there's still a lot of that. things here. I mean, that's that's really, again, the when people talk about Quest Rogue, that's always like part of the beauty of Quest Rogue is that there are just so many things you can do. So pretty pristine play so far. It's hard for me to tell like what would have been better or worse because everything's looking just quite strong right now. You know, I think taking as much damage as he did, he definitely certainly took, took a risk. <gasps> if Definition had the weapon in play, he'd be working towards lethal because the Azelina can copy the South Sea Deckhand and the Zola and the Shadow Step. And the way it gets charged would be with a weapon. I think Definition should really have considered setting up the weapon this turn to think about that Azelina and how it interacts with charge versus what Roger's nine life total is right now. Yeah. That's two attacks plus an attack of the Super Collider. Mm -hmm. He knows the Zola's there. He knows the South Sea Deckhand's there. This is 17 damage available for Roger. So he's one damage off lethal, I believe. He can play Sh South Sea Deckhand, Shadow Reflections to South Sea Deckhand. And then Zola plus a Shadow Step would be 16, 17 with the dagger. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, there's not really many minions left in the deck that are not, you know, Lab Recruiter, Novice Engineer, or those two. So, you know, we just entered the territory where Definition's been close, but just not quite able to get wait, there. Wait, wait, wait. Was there a two-turn lethal setup yes. for Definition? If he armors up and shield slams the Youthful Brewmaster and then just plays Azelina? Next turn, he super colliders. Well, the Dazzelina overrides your super collider. Oh, yeah, that's right. You'd have to play super collider yeah, first. It, that's, what, that's what I was thinking, too, is that the yeah, super yeah. collider set up this turn puts Roger in a position where maybe he moves in on you. Nah, the, the mana expenditure wouldn't be there. He knows that there's South Sea Deckhand plus Zola plus Shadow Reflections. He'd die over two turns. He wouldn't have enough health or mana to be able to make that happen. I don't I don't, I don't understand what you mean. He, if you go armor, shield slam, set super collider, what, what change has been made? Uh, because you can't Azalina the next turn and live without using the South Sea Deckhand to clear off the board that Roger had created. Your opponent would be at nine mm -hmm. when you have a Super Collider set. So then you Azalina and you get Shadow Step and South Sea Deckhand. Oh, you get Shadow Step. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. The idea is if you don't play anything, Roger doesn't necessarily need to play defense. But he didn't He didn't know that the Shadow Step was there, whereas he did know that South Sea Deckhand and Zola were there. True story. Very true story. So for him, that's a big risk that he wasn't willing to take. 
I think at, at this point, it should have been a big risk that he is willing to take. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the reason right there is like, you know, we've entered this fa the phase where does Roger even have a bad draw left in the deck? Yeah. And the answer is kind of, but no. <laughs> yeah, but no. And Roger takes a pretty expected game one with Quest Rogue over the odd word, but man, it was close. Yeah, I want to set the caveat to my statement of, you know, what feels like fairly harsh criticism, I guess, towards the end, that uh, Definition did a fantastic job of putting Roger in a bad spot. It, it, that was a situation where Roger could have lost the game. He had a lethal setup. It's like, take that Mimic Pot out of the equation, and instead you draw Preparation. Yeah. Whoa, that turn looks way worse suddenly. Yeah. Very close. That game was on a razor's edge, which is not always the case with Odd Warrior uh, versus Quest Rogue. But, you know, we have to keep coming back to those two spotlighted decks. Even Warlock for Roger and Odd Warrior for Definition. Those are the two that we have to look at to get wins for this series to really start heating up. But for now, Roger, 1-0 lead over Definition. And we're going to see if he can continue that lead book himself a spot at the World Championship right after this. あ、ライナブル짜는 하스톤 게임이 재미가 있으니까 일단 먼저 하게 되는 거고 다음에 제가 생각했을 때어 지금 메타에선 이 덱이 좋을 것 같다라고 생각이 되면은 이제 그 덱을 해서 이제 등급전에서 등수를 올려서 뭔가 테스트 해보고 싶고 그런 게 있어서 이제 어 열심히 하게 되는 것 같아요. Hi, 就是其实有那么多人支持我就是我希望我能發揮我最好的實力,然後這樣我覺得就已經很足夠了。Welcome back everybody to the HGT Winter Championship. Once again, I'm TJ joined by the Admiral. That's admirable. Hi. We're about to jump into game number two between Roger and Definition, and this is an uphill battle for Definition. He's oh, yeah. going to struggle with that odd word throughout this whole series. And there's a lot of stakes here. The one shining light at the end of the very, very dark tunnel. Uh, actually, it's a pretty short tunnel, and it's kind of filled with light. Because either way, they have a good chance of qualifying to the World Championship. Because of the tiebreaker situation, whoever <laughs> loses this matchup also has another chance 
and potentially even another chance to qualify for Worlds because Bloody Face and Bunny Hopper are already in the top four, which means out of fifth through eighth, there will only be three players that are fighting for two spots. Did you just argue with yourself? <laughs> I did. That happens a lot. Well, you got hey, to stop because they're going to take away my job if you <laughs> don't have anyone to argue with. <laughs> Glad we're on the same page. <laughs> It's been TJ's secret plan all along. Your soul shall be mine. All right, well, we're going to jump into Druid versus Even Warlock. And uh, as we had mentioned previously before the break, while Odd Warrior is the deck that Definition needs to find a win with, Even Warlock is that deck for Roger. His lineup otherwise just crushes Definition. But Even Warlock is that weak point. We have turned our curse I don't into know our if strength. I was looking at this wrong, but did Definition Mulligan neutralize? I feel like I had to have been looking at this wrong if that well, was so the case. The, the way you have to look at it in this matchup specifically, it is the Hikar Druid. So basically in the early game, all you want is just cycle. Well you just want to cycle through because those naturalizes are actually crucial to the plan of the late game. I, like I, I do agree with, with that, fire. but... Ooh, got the uh, the Gadgets and Auctioneer. Yeah, that, that one is super crucial. I, Admittedly, that is probably the most important card in the deck. Um, it allows you to do some pretty disgusting things. If you haven't seen this actually happen before, uh, there there is effectively like a like a third and fourth auctioneer. It's just that you need Wild Power Mixer and you need Acolyte of Pain. Uh, you can do some pretty nasty stuff with the zero cost spells and all these cyclers. And once you start getting through the deck, that's really where Roger finds himself in trouble. Because the definition just drawn so many cards. Like there's key cards in the deck and once you reach them, you can often put your opponent in a, in a tough position. See, you found the naturalized. Yeah, I mean, it, it does make sense. Like, you know, right after I start thinking about it a bit where you said you pretty much just want cycle. I was like, oh yeah, I guess if you just draw enough cards, that's way better than keeping it in the mulligan. Yeah. You know, still a pretty massive favorite to find one. Because in that case, you get naturalized plus a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Would you rather have naturalized or naturalized plus a bunch of other stuff? Um, I'd rather have naturalized plus a bunch of other stuff, namely Auctioneer and, you know, the like. Now, I am a bit curious about Definition's actual, uh, attack uh, on the last couple turns, where he is setting Roger closer to uh, Hooked Reaver territory. Um, I'm a bit surprised that Roger doesn't tap as a result of that because oftentimes burning cards in the matchup means nothing, but getting yourself to 15 to play a Hooked Reaver means a lot. And so two taps in a row here, sure, Roger should be burning cards, but you know what card in his deck is of vital importance at the moment? I don't think Definition's hmm. going to go off with this Naturalize here. That's my take. He can't play Innervate. I don't think so. Oh, he's got two Innervate, so he can play one Innervate. I, I I don't think so, I would do that. I think I would naturalize. Okay. Just naturalize and don't do anything I'd else. probably branching pass as well. Okay. That sets up for a reasonable turn next turn with uh, Gadget and Auctioneer plus draw your entire deck. Reasonable! Yeah. That's what you call reasonable. <laughs> That's a pretty reasonable turn to me. If you're going to gain armor from the branching pass, however, you're not going to naturalize. Um, because in that case, what you want to do is set the Gadgeton Auctioneer, use the Naturalize, the Spellstone, and, you know, the incidental moon fires and Pounce and stuff you're going to have and try to leverage your life total. Like, imagine if Roger had life tapped last turn. That would be a 7-7 seven -seven with Taunt instead. I think that's a big blunder from Roger to go, I don't want to burn a card. I got the best deals anywhere. Hold on to your butts. That's a Jurassic Park reference. Oh. <laughs> you remember that scene? Where he's about to like hack into the system and try to turn the the, the power back on? Hold on to your butts. That's what the guy says. <laughs> oh, biology project. Wow. That's a big one. There's a lot of like oh my goodness. pseudo things that go on in yeah, this deck. Yeah, but there's there's a lot of branching paths that Definition could go on here. <laughs> on which of these cards to actually expend. Draws Quarkskin, though, this also has the added benefit of buffing this other spell so that he drew. Time waits for no one. And that's also true. It doesn't wait for anybody. It's Mr. Waggle himself. Your Majesty. I, I would definitely consider naturalizing at this stage. Um, 
And I think it has much less to do with the fact that it's important to naturalize and much more to do with the fact that you are generating tempo and at the same time you're, you're cycling through the deck. Look, the second Auctioneer with Togwaggle already found, uh, I think Definition is in a pretty fantastic spot and it's, it's going to be tough for him, I think, to just absolutely fall out of this game. Yeah. The first four mana that Roger spends this turn is in some way probably killing an Auctioneer. Although I have found that at times to be fruitless and leaving your opponent's Auctioneers in play can do work as well, which may be why Definition had decided to attack earlier in the game is knowing that that can be counterplayed at the deck, actually leaving Auctioneers there and then taking too much damage from cycling. Yeah, I've seen that be a problem before. Albeit that's a bigger problem with Mechathun Drew than it is with this version. So with one naturalized used, things become a little bit weird in the late game. Drawing your deck, that's the easy part. Navigating that late game to kill your opponent is the difficult part with one naturalized use. Because Hakar, you either need to hold on to the spell stone to be able to kill the Hakar, My and then you can uh, use naturalize to get those bloods out. Because you can't leave yourself vulnerable to spell breaker on your car. You can't just play it and hope it dies. You need those two layers of things to happen. I got some layers of things happening here for you. Let the pain Definition me. has just got a lovely setup in this game. Yeah, it's also important to have the mindfulness to hang on to the Innervate. The second Innervate is not capable of being used, yeah. like, at all. And he has to, uh, again, I think he has to hold on to Innervate, Naturalize, and Spellstone. Which, by proxy, also means Biology Project because you need to Hakar, Innervate, Biology Project to get two mana, Spellstone, and Naturalize. Is that right? I no, the Naturalize is saved for the for the Togwaggle to swap the Bloods into your opponent's deck and then make them draw them for to kill them. Okay. Hard getting burned. Is that important? No, he's got everything he needs. Okay, that's why he's willing to burn hard. Yeah, okay. So now he's really got to think this through. I mean, yeah, now has he fallen into, like, too tough of a spot? I mean, you're facing down 16 damage. I was I was thinking about the second Spellstone for a minute, and I didn't want to make the comic, so I was like, he already played a Spellstone, right? That was hmm. my head. Um, and then you, you know, took that route and explained exactly why he's holding on to that Spellstone. So that that is super important that he doesn't really want to use those tools. But honestly, like, I think you can get to a point where you don't necessarily need the naturalize if you're swapping decks. Like, Roger is over two turns. Is he going to be able to kill you if you've staved off damage? And then number two, how long does it take for Hakar to really turn in a situation like that? They didn't have to do it the other way around, which takes a lot more time. Whoa, you can't just play Hakar. At, now, that, that I know you can't do. Well, he can shuffle the bloods in his deck now. But then, thinning his deck is much okay. more difficult. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. It's like, so this is this is accounting for the fact that he feels like he's being too pressured and needs to start taking action decisively on it. All right, so his his deck consists of now. Wow, definition clasping the hands, a corrupted blood drawn instantaneously as well. That doesn't really matter. Could that change the math on, on I Roger don't, I don't hitting think it, a percent, though? I don't think it changes the math. The weird thing is that Definition now has to make sure his deck is only Bloods for somehow. So, so he needs to survive for... He, he needs to take two more turns of minion hits? The, the other option for last turn was to try and draw cards, but I don't think he has anything left in his deck that would deal with the Hook Dreaver. This this is where my debate comes in. I don't understand the necessity to hold on to a Naturalize if your opponent's deck is only Corrupted Bloods, or if your deck is only Corrupted Bloods. Once the Corrupted Bloods are there, Roger then has the onus of killing you, or the Corrupted Bloods will kill him. Yeah, but it takes longer is the thing. I don't think that matters. I think you need to get the time to do that first. Okay, I see what you're talking about. Then I don't think he has the time now because he's taken 22 from a hook reaper. Yeah. You can't do that. So n now... Spreading Plague Drawn, maybe you can do that. Spreading Plague Barkskin. He Half the deck's Corrupted Bloods 
And if you decide to tog waggle and then naturalize, I think taking that hit might have changed the percent of the way this works. Because at 20, 24 is a technical breakpoint. 25 is the breakpoint, rather. I apologize. Okay, well. We're getting All right, there. so he pulled a card out of his deck. That's important. We be taking this match. Yeah, this is really important. I think Roger has has a good chance to die here. I don't know the exact math. I'm, I've, I haven't charted this out myself. Yeah, the, the one card in the mix, it, it stops the chain is the thing. Mind you, the deck shuffles. Yeah, I think he's dead. He's super dead. Yeah, the deck shuffles, and he picked up the branching pad, so... Yeah. Yeah. He got it. Because then you take the fatigue from the naturalize, and then you draw for your turn. Yep. So, the taking the, the hit on the Corrupted Blood didn't matter. It, I mean, look how much damage Roger's taking this turn, but Definition did have a plan here. That's a very difficult match to navigate, and Definition finds itself <laughs> with a victory. In the way that it was navigated, yes. Um, yeah. I have actually never done it with my opponent's deck when I swap having cards left that aren't that aren't corrupted that aren't bloods. Corrupted bloods. Um, and that's but largely because I don't have, have to practice it. Yeah. Uh, Definition has clearly done that at some point and clearly thought through that iteration yeah. and wasn't sure about it. Well, the, I think the biggest thing there was him recognizing that he needed to draw a card with Wrath and basically not hit a blood. Yeah. Because there was a chance that if he hit a blood, yes, he would have swapped more, but there was a chance that two non-bloods in a row would have stopped the chain right. for, for Roger in his draw sequence for the, the next couple of turns with the naturalize. So recognizing they would have enough mana to draw a card with Wrath, pull out a non-blood from his deck, have enough mana with Biology Project to still tog naturalize and do the math that that's a victory. Insane in the membrane. It's complicated. Just like your Facebook relationship status. That's not mine. Touche. I was trying to be hip and young there. It didn't work, I guess. <laughs> Did not work. It's for old people now, anyway. Happily married. That's why I'm wearing the suspenders. Because <laughs> I've given up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Karen. Game three is coming up. And we still have Odd Warrior in the pool for uh, for definition, which is the tough deck for him to get through. And we just saw Roger on the deck that TJ and I are concerned about uh, him getting through, which is the even Warlock. I think that Definition has a pretty real chance to beat this uh, with his particular Odd Warrior list because he's brought uh, the additional copy of removal with Big Game Hunter and is playing the Carnivorous Cube and the Faceless Manipulator version. So there are times where you can Faceless we one of your opponent's big minions and then Shield Slam it. And then you get to Cube and that sets up a Brawl or a Flurry, which is often enough to, to seal the deal. Definition's queuing up his own even Warlock this game, and it does feature a copy of Nerubian Unraveler, a card that is at times pretty troublesome for Priest. Um, and Rogers brought the Cloning Gallery Priest, which is quite slim on minions, and thus I think a little bit better in this matchup. Yeah, even Warlock, also a deck that just taps itself to low life totals, which means that you can end the game with a lot lower break points. Sometimes even just play Velen on set on 10 and Mind Blast Holy Smite them. No fancy stuff necessary. Yeah. So for definition, uh, you know, we might be nearing the end of like a life tap super aggressively train. Um, I, I'd say at the points where definition still needs particular cards, that's going to change. But right now I'm looking at three back to back to back threats that could be good enough to get the job done. Yeah. Roger does have answers to those threats. With Mass Dispel for the Twilight Drake and Shadow or Death for the Mountain Giant. Definition has instead thrown caution to the wind and says, I will not uh, be stopped by this nonsense. I will play my big threats and attempt to kill my opponent as aggressively as possible, yeah, which I probably should have guessed after game one. Yeah, but that's a, a Shadow or Death gone. He has seen the Shadow Visions, but he, if he's hand tracking, well, he knows that that one copy of Shadow or Death that was played is the only one and came before the Shadow Visions, which means this Mountain Giant is happily alive. Look at him. Kind of looks like Thanos. A little bit. 
It's the lines. Kind of looks like a mountain. Giant. <laughs> wow, you're smart. Oh! Brutal. Savage. Wrecked. Definition still with uh, the Shroom Brewer in hand, so it goes to seven. Ah, wow. The Shroom Brewer actually sets it up uh, perfectly for a mass hysteria yeah. on the following turn as well. Yep. That's if Roger elects to attack, though. He's clearly thinking about this, and to me, the answer is very clearly attack. Uh, but you have to consider what, like, Homunculus Spellstone will look like. Um, you know, uh, the no attack thing is also, like, you know, Spellbreaker is a bad deal for you. It's a pretty safe attack to make and just keep your opponent uh, in in a weak offensive spot. Still got threats for days, perhaps even weeks. Yeah, I am quite curious if maybe you can trade the Mountain Giant in this situation uh, rather than attempt to heal it. It's just because of how open you are to, uh, to Mass Hysteria at that point. Yeah, that's the... Uh, it's whether or not he wants to reset get rid of this Mountain Giant and play Twilight Drake to have a guaranteed threat through uh, Mass Hysteria. We've been talking about how cold it is in the studio. I'm sorry to interrupt so you. For like possibly months at this point. We now have our first evidence of it. <laughs> Roger just put on a jacket. It's freezing. Oh, I'm short sleeves. I feel good. I do have uh, an extra layer. <laughs> Compared to most people. Well, this doesn't set it up perfectly for Mass Hysteria because there's an iteration where the Plated Beetle hits the Mountain Giant. That's a pretty four, four perfect line. to me. Well, you still got to deal with a 4-4. Four, four. Which oh, is the bane of Priest. <laughs> I feel like if you say it facetiously, it doesn't count towards the bingo. Oh, now he's got to deal with a 2-3. Mass Hysteria was great there. It was. It was good. I'll agree. Very upset if that happens to me. I think the big question here is the Rubian Unraveler timing for definition. When do you play it? An excellent question. Um, I think it's as soon as you get some pressure compounding is really when. And that still seems quite far off. This is definition this is going to tell a lot about what his game plan is because if he bone mares he rolls right into shadow reaper and i think it's four attack minion four attack minion go yes i mean th this is just simply you know, like the best plan of attack because bone mare represents burst and these do not typically it's slower things first mm -hmm. and so for roger uh the fact that he doesn't have a coin means that this turn ends up operating a lot slower than he, he would like it to yeah Spellstone is just a Ziliax, I believe, at this stage. Radiant Spellstone is a Radiant Elemental in a Ziliax. I, you know, I, I would guess it's like Radiant Eternal Servitude, maybe, but the Servitude's giving up some uh, some of the combo kill potential. Yeah. But the Spellstone, to me, because he has two of them, doesn't seem quite as, uh, as aggressive of a notion. I mean, they nerfed Giggling Inventor to seven mana. Why not Zilliax? Hey. Hey. Not funny. I just thought it was clever. Nope. Not funny. Nope. How dare you? How dare I what? Just do it. Do what? Precision. Roger going to eternal servitude here for the Zilliax. Go back to 30, and uh, he, he's feeling okay. These are greater diamond spell zones now. The problem is he needs minions. A thing to play. I, I like things to play. Yes, very much. I wonder why it would be the ooze over uh, exactly mass hysteria would be the reasoning. I don't think ma that really matters. The outcomes are the same. You're correct. So then it'd be holding on to 7-7? Does that really matter? 
Does the ooze change anything in terms of uh, where your combat sits? Yeah. I personally am playing the Hooked Reaver because I have a Blood Reaver Gul'dan in my hand. Yeah. It's an awfully appealing looking Psychic Scream. I think it's an awfully appealing looking Malagos. That too. You're not going to die. Consider. Your opponent either trades into it and then they die. What if they silence and play an Arubian uh, Unraveler? Yeah, that, that would be a reason not to play Malagos. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great reason not to play Malagos. I just saved TJ a ladder game later. <laughs> yes, you did. Wow, that would have happened. It's a shattery for Anduin. Balls it up with Bone Mare, though. Uh, well, the shattery Branduin will also kill the 3 2 thanks to the hero power. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. This is looking quite tough for definition right now. Yeah. Wasn't able to stick the board and protect it with Unraveler, and Roger now is, is actually closing in on, on lethal damage. Whether it's Amalgo sticking or dying and resing with the Spellstone, or even just hero powering over a couple turns. And then Mind Blast uh, plus Holy Smite. If he Shadow Reaper Anduin's now in hero powers, the next turn he would have 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three hero powers, Mind Blast, Holy Smite. I'm interested in this Smite. Job done. That seems quite peculiar to me. I'm going to give that an I don't know about that, Teach. Magic shall not save I think that's the way that Roger could, could get beat up in this game. However, seeing this sequence now makes me, you know, believe that the Shadow Reaper Anduin might have been quite a brilliant hold. Only way to deal with Nerubian Unraveler. He wasn't in any threat of dying. And now, even though Malagos is silenced, it's still a 412 that gets to fight. Right. Still got a Mind Blast in hand. If Malagos ever does die, he just gets to resurrect it. Yeah. And the Blood Reaver Gul'dan is not juiced at this point. Uh, there's no Dread Infernal. There's just one copy of Hooked Reaver. And there are no Vulgar Homunculus. Uh, there's, yeah, one of the Hooked Reavers was Psychic Scream back to the deck to our friend. Shields up. So Sun Fury Protector in Bone Mare to try and protect this life build. Quick turn from Definition, though, who's quite confident in this Bone Mare, but I believe the only minion in Roger's deck is... Um, Felon. I believe so? Unless there's another Radiant that I... I think there's... Yeah, there's another Radiant. Okay, there is another Radiant then. Wait, no. Radiant died. Yeah, there was a Radiant dead already, wasn't there? Yeah. So yeah. you're right. It's Felon. So Shadow attack here. Thoughts. And then shoot your guy and then res. And then you can't die to what definition has in the No, deck. and then it's lethal because Mind Blast is 20 damage because you bring back a Radiant. Mind Blast costs one. Uh, oh, no, you don't have the Velen in the pool yet because you didn't summon it with Shadow Essence. The point being, he's Roger's got everything He's good. Here. Yeah, definition yeah. can't just, he can't deliver a lethal blow in time. Uh, yeah. Can he kill the Malagos and have that do anything? I don't think so. Uh, he actually can. But will, will that change the impact of the game? No, because then he just reses it again with uh, with the Greater Spellstone, and he has nothing on board because he has to Hellfire, trade the Bone Mare, and then Spellstone. So here it is. Yeah. Now you hero power, Shadow Essence, hero power? He plays Blood River Gul'dan. You still have the 20 damage combo oh, because it's going to be Bell oh, and it's going to die. Lost. Job done. Well, that's game now. Bell and dies. Yep. Res pool is. Res pool is Ziliax, Radiant Elemental, Malagos, Bell Yep. Roger up 2 1.
Definition got all of his threats checked this game. Roger even with the Vivid Nightmare. Just to rub it in. I would just do 40 damage. Let's Not save. in the quarterfinal game, Admirable. No way, Jose. Oh. Roger takes a 2-1 lead in the series. That, that one seemed a lot closer than what it ended up at. Yeah. Because I feel like definition was basically just a board sticking a Nerubian Unraveler played from being very close to closing that one out. But as is the trend from this weekend, even Warlock continues to struggle and Definition can't really afford for that to happen when that's not even the focal point of his lineup for Roger. Right, and I, I would say that in the mirror match uh, with even Warlock that Roger is slightly favored with uh, a copy of Stubborn Gastropod where Definition has a copy of Plated Beetle uh, instead. And then also in the six drop slot, uh, Roger gets a minus one for that one because he's a second copy of Nerubian and Raveler. Definition does not. So basically a mirror match where there's one early tech card that could change things a lot. Yeah, but still a lot of game left to play in this series. Roger on the verge of qualifying to the world championship. Definition's got to be feeling the pressure. We're going to see how this series unfolds. We're going to have to go to a quick break, but don't go anywhere. More HCT Winter Championship quarterfinals right after this. Definition is just choosing to work out whether he wants to either Sassy deck hand this, whether he wants to Glacial Shard it, but either way, it just removes a nice bounce effect. Mm -hmm. 그런 것들을 이제 조금 배운 것 같아요. 어떻게 하면 더 좋게 할수 있을지 어, 여러 가지로 이렇게 계속 생각하면서 했던 것 같아서 일단 상금을 받으면은 뭐라 할지 이렇게 크게 생각은 안 해봤지만 제가 평소에 이제 덱을 만들 때 이제 카드가 많이 없어서 하고 싶은 덱을 많이 못할 때가 있는데 어, 이번에 4월 새로운 확장팩을 되게 기대하고 있는데 어, 확장팩도 사서 이제 좀 이런저런 덱 연구도 해보고 싶고 그다음에 또 다른 거는 이제 제가 해외에 나와 보니까 어, 여러 가지로 배울 게 많은 것 같아서 다른 나라도 한번 가보는 해외 여행도 한번 가보고 싶어요. 경계심 같은 건 없고 사실 어, 제가 뭐 이렇게 전문적으로 아스스톤을 하는 선수는 아니었지만. 뭔가 재미있게 하다 보니까 어떻게 이 자리까지 왔고 어, 될수 있는 데까지 가면 좋을 것 같아. 因為其實就是今年比賽也快要結束然後這次已經是最後一次比較那個能前往世界的機會我希望用我最好的成績跟我最好的表現然後前往世界賽所以我想拿冠軍就這次其實我認為大家因為在最近的版本是快攻已经砍落我认为大家可能比较不会带快攻可能相对就会跟我带的差不多或者是在比较快一点点但就我觉得这次如果有带快攻的人就是他们排组节奏比较快相对可能都会比较有优势我这次觉得我
Every game, every move becomes even more crucial as the HCT Winter Championship continues. Welcome back, everybody, to the HCT Winter Championship. I'm TJ once again joined by the Admiral. That's admirable. Howdy. Things are heating up here in this final quarterfinal. Roger and Definition both fighting for a spot in the semifinals. And thus, a spot at the World Championship. You understand the brevity of the situation that's admirable. I just said it. This is a big deal. It is. I don't think you're taking this seriously enough. What? Why? You're being so accusatory. Big question here for Definition is... Will he be able to bring this to a game five? And then there's another question after that for Definition. Can he find a win with the Odd Warrior? I think if Definition wins this game, uh, that he's favored. he has an advantage. Yeah. And that it, is a a tall task. And Roger has a Mountain Giant. Now, granted, he's on the play, not the coin. Definition is on the coin, also has a Mountain Giant. His Mountain Giant comes down first. Okay, so big keys to look for. Uh, Doomsayer. Doomsayer or Stubborn Gastropod early for Roger will set the tone in his favor. Uh, if that's not the case, Definition has a slight lead but needs another threat to compound the issue. They drew the same first three cards. That is kind of weird. No Gastropod. One more turn for it. Homunculus is a good pickup as well. That blocks the Mountain Giant for a turn. Homunculus is a good pickup, and he can still play his Mountain Giant on curve. But also, you can look at it from a different perspective. By playing the Vulgar Homunculus, you essentially let Mountain Giant two for one you. Because you're not going to hit face in that situation when you're tempted with the option of trading into a Mountain Giant because you don't want to activate their Hooked Reavers. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that. Yeah. There, there is a certain degree that I'm worried about it too, and you know when I don't have any spell stones in hand, that is usually one of those degrees. That tap from Roger is uh, a nod almost specifically to drawing a second mountain giant and getting aggressive. Yeah, but after this mount this mountain giant, both players kind of find themselves in a little bit of a weird spot here. Um, honestly, the, the play that I like the best, even though it sounds weird, is trade over the Mountain Giant, heal Roger's face with the Shroom Brewer. Heal Roger's face? Heal Roger's face okay. with the Shroom Brewer. I dislike healing Roger's face because um, he has eight life taps to go until he's into Hooked Reaver's range. That, c that can get pretty quick, and at any point, the way you win this matchup, unless you just get a good uh, early board lead, is oftentimes by just getting... Power, more powerful minions online sooner and taking complete control of the game. Okay. Well, I would like to just heal the acidic swampoos if we're going to heal Roger's face. If that, if the game plan is to not heal ourselves so that we get to hook Reaver, I would rather heal a, a minion uselessly than heal my opponent's face in that instance. Because damage matters in this matchup. The other greedy play is to trade over the acidic swampoos, which is a play that I very detest. Yeah. I've told you this before, I am an even Warlock elitist, and Definition is going to heal Roger's face. I personally dislike it, but there are merits to it. Uh, he clearly play, plans to play a super defensive game now and keep Roger from ever getting value from Hooked Reaver. So Definition's game plan is to eliminate threats from Roger right now. That's where he's, he's seated. I have done that at times, but usually when I do that, I already have Gul'dan available. And when I don't have Gul'dan available, I'm much less comfortable executing that game plan. Even Warlock, the mirror matchup, reminds me of if you combined, or uh, let me start over. Okay. The Even Warlock mirror matchup is if, in the Olympics, if at the, in the 100 meter sprint, if instead of a photo finish when two players are really close, if they thought two players were really close, they just made them run a marathon to break the tights. <laughs> Because it's basically just them sprinting to see if someone can land two Mountain Giants while the other player doesn't. And if they don't do that, then it goes t pretty long. Yeah, that, that is, a, a, I'd say, a pretty typical case for it. And when Roger sees the heal to his own face, he stops attacking Definition, which makes me wonder, should you have attacked him in the first place?
Probably not. <laughs> it feels to me like the, the weight of the situation this whole tournament has been on Roger's shoulders. And at some point, he has reminded himself within the matchup, don't autopilot, even though that's very comfortable. You need to stop and think about things. I don't blame him for autopiloting sometimes. Everybody does that. I feel like Roger's card quality is just a ways above definitions. I would I would definitely consider it superior right now. Just Lich King on eight, if you're if you're in this kind of battle where you're going back and forth, trading off boards, trying to land the threat that sticks. Yeah. Lich King is like the ultimate trump card in that, in that situation that, because it's a value generator. It's also just the biggest uh, minion yeah. in the deck outside of Mountain Giant. Yeah, it's honestly like the reason I have a problem with the coin usage of definition is uh, you get sunk into a situation where your opponent literally always gets to Lich King or Bone Mare before you get access to eight mana. And that's one of the ways that you outright lose the game. And now there's not a way to answer this Dread Infernal. You have a 4-1 in play and your best play into it is again Grey Main which is set up to be Spellstone in his perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's another way he loses the game, is if Roger has a Spellstone and then pretty much anything to put on the board. Hmm. This curse has become our greatest strength. Genjamin it is. But there is no Spellstone for Roger. No, so he can't capitalize on this. Cards in the end means you have to play one first before you tap. But he's in line to either land a Bone Mare or a Lich King. That is not, that's not a good hand. But in tough times like this, that's a good hand. <laughs> that, okay, all of a sudden. That's a major point of disruption for definition where Roger would normally just be able to jam a Lich King down and not worry much about it. And now instead, uh, I'm looking towards, uh, you know, a couple different plays where it's either it's either Bone Mare and Trade uh, or it's some sort of Hellfire and, and Hooked Reaver play. Yeah, Hellfire, Hooked Reaver. The problem is the Hellfire, Hooked Reaver gives your opponent a, a way to, you know, start actually just blowing up all your cards and maybe actually recover from a situation. I personally like the Bone Mare because you can Bone Mare the uh, the two three and actually you know consider going face in that measure because you have Spellbreaker in your hand. So if Definition's plan is then just Hook Reaver after that, you have Spellbreaker to bust through it. But at the same time, if it's double Hook Reaver, you get punished for that. It's just the situations carry so much weight to them that it's difficult to to like fully execute something to a big degree. So I think if I'm in Roger's spot. I'm bone marrying the Shroom Brewer and trading. So that way I have seven attacks set up on board. I'm going to chip away for two, which is outside the range of a, of a weird life tap situation. And I'm going to try to lean on my lead. Definition effectively drawing all the cards in the matchup that you just don't want to see. Outside of the Mountain Giant last turn, his hand has very little proactive plays. Yeah. It's all reactive, which means that when you're in a situation like this... Whoa, that was quick. I don't know about that one. That's probably enough to do it. This could be like a weird setup for a Defile play that Definition has in mind. <laughs> Roger. You got to pace yourself. You're only on like mile 11 of this marathon. Possibilities. Pacing himself. Uh, uh, is there a reason not trade trade Lich King here? Am I am I losing my mind? Uh, maybe a burn. If he does have some way to take care of uh, Lich King, then and you. What takes care of Lich King? You have hell, no hell, minions. Hellfire Spellstone. Then you burn blood over gold. That's a double hook reaver. This is good too. I think this is a really good middle ground. 
I personally wanted the Lich King in play. Burning Blood Reaver Gul'dan, a real, a real threat though. So I can't criticize. This is, this is good. Now definition's in the same spot, but instead of staring at a three-two and a four-four, he's staring at a seven-seven, a five-five, and a four-four. Yeah, you also don't want to play Lich King into your opponent just blowing it up. Like if you know your opponent's gonna blow it up, it's very different than if your opponent has to spend a lot of stuff to blow it up. Oh boy. Trade Hooked Reaver and the Ruby Unraveler. That's probably pretty close to game. I feel like you've said that every turn. I didn't say it last turn. I didn't say it the turn before that. I didn't say it the turn before that. Yeah, but the turn before that, you I'm did. pretty sure this is the first time I've said it. It could be. So you now you're just making stuff up. Pretty sure I've cast you. You're ticking me off now. <laughs> Two road cell paso. Oh, oh, we're gonna get it. Wait a gosh darn second. This does offer some full clear potential. It's gotta be a defile here. This definition just doesn't have much life left to work with. Yeah, you could trade Hellfire Defile. That uses all 10 mana. All 10 mana. Seeds full initiative over to Roger. Oh, that's the sound that definition's making in his head right now. Uh, but you don't have a gosh darn choice. <laughs> you always have a choice, TJ. <laughs> Maybe not if you want to accomplish your goal of winning the game. But Roger is pretty firmly in full control now. This is why, in my opinion, you heal your own face. Now we got a Lich King Acidic Swamp Boots play. And Definition currently has no answer. His answer to Lich King is oh my. Double Hooked Reaver and Prey. He now has an answer to Lich King. But again, it takes up his whole turn. He gets to throw a, uh, a plated beetle alongside of it. Yeah, it, uh, honestly, the spell stone is probably the biggest draw in the deck outside of maybe a Hellfire because it accomplishes pretty close to the same thing. And that honestly might be enough to get definition out of this. So now, oh wow, that's a good draw. Just being able to have access to Doomsayer is such an important mechanism. It's got 14 damage this turn with the Death Coil. That Death Coil, yeah, that's a big one too. Most likely going to be the X Factor in this game. He's also got Spellbreaker. I think this is lights out. Now I can officially say I think we're close to game over here. <laughs> Definition goes face. It's a Spellbreaker trade. Hook Reaver. Yeah, he's dead. He goes up to 16 by trading in. There's nine on board. He yeah, can Spellbreaker, 20. Hellfire, Death Coil. It's because it's 20 from the uh, the double Hellfire and Death Coil. Yep. Your magic shall not save you. There's got to be a Defile here. There's got... There is a Defile here. Well, how did we not spot... Andy lands a Hook Reaver. There's always a Defile. That's like always the thing we're looking for. Why did we stop looking for it suddenly? He's not dead. He, not only is he not dead, Roger just doesn't have very good pressure to add this turn. Definition, though, out of healing. So many possibilities. This is definitely the play to make in the face of this. The end is coming. If you're going to kill something, you need to buy back initiative. Definition needs to really think about playing either a Hook Reaver or a Lich King or Life Tapping and then reconsidering doing one of those things because he's going to need Blood Reaver Gul'dan. And if he needs Blood Reaver Gul'dan, I'm thinking you'd probably need another Hook Reaver in the pool just to get something on board for free. It's neither of those plays.
Still not much pressure, though, for Roger. Nurbian and Raveler limits his own ability to burst. Blood River Gul'dan one card away. He's just going to set up the Unraveler. Blood River Gul'dan picked up! Wow. Wow. He's only played a Hooked Reaver. Has he played a Vulgar Homunculus? Oh, what? Yeah. Okay. Stop and think. Blood River Gul'dan is the best card in the deck. That needs so to be played right now. That absolutely needs to be played. You need to get that hero power online. If you play your Blood Reaver Gul'dan second, you are done. Which is, this is the re I talked about this earlier in the tournament too. Throwing away Hooked Reavers to get extra development for Gul'dan. If you know that Gul'dan's your draw, do that. But if he plays Lich King, then Roger won't want to play Blood Reaver Gul'dan. That's the other side of that coin. That is true. I mean, the the, pre the pressure threat on the other side is very real. And now, because Roger, his only threat really to play was un Newer being Unraveler, he doesn't have the ability to Spellbreaker and push I, this I, damage. You still want to play Blood Reaver Cooldown. I think so giving up a second Lich King card here is not the hugest deal needs. in the world. Uh, now, there's a potential. Do we have to think about fatigue at all? Because Roger's tapped for more cards. This also sets up lethal. He's got Bone Mare in hand. Well, there's there's two vulgar homunculus. If he didn't have Blood River Gul'dan, is what I was saying. Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah, forces Roger to either Blood River Gul'dan and let his Lich King live another turn. And now that sets up lethal. By a lot. This is a hard game. I think definition might be dead. I think both of his vulgar homunculus are in the bottom six, so he doesn't have that taunt wall to put in the way with Blood River Gul'dan. What could he even death grip? I think the key was finding an impactful Lich King card. And there's no defiles left. Well, I don't even know what impact what Lich King card would have been impactful enough. With double spellbreaker in hand. Two taunts in the way doesn't mean anything. Puts on the Doomsayer, but that's not gonna do a darn thing. Which means that Roger is gonna end this game, take the series three to one and move on to the top four with a spot at the World Championship. Patience to hold on to Spellbreakers the entire time as well. He had the aggressive initiative, and thus he didn't need to play them. He could continue to hold them as a threat. And it's a, it's a weird game plan, but it's the trade, the trade, the trade, the trade, over and over again, right until your opponent stumbles and you have Spellbreakers to bust through. And that is the reason why Spellbreakers are in there is to bust through taunts. So I think Roger played that game pretty fantastically, all things considered. Yeah. Uh, and even going going uh, first and not having the initial mountain giant ended up being, you know, overall his outcome, which I think is a, is a pretty big statement. Yeah, a, a very tough game to navigate as well. With that much pressure on you, even Warlock Mirrors can get pretty hectic as you get to, towards those later stages of the game. Both players are dropping their life totals low. You're on the verge of lethal damage turn after turn after turn. So uh, just a crazy way uh, to end that series. And it concludes with, with Roger qualifying for Worlds. And right now, Raven is standing by with an interview. All right, congratulations, Roger, on the victory. Um, first off, can you just tell me what it feels like right now as you have booked your spot at the World Championship? 首先恭喜你拿到了進入世界賽的門票,請請問你現在心情是什麼?我現在已經完成我第一個目標,我下一個目標就是拿下這次比賽的冠軍。I've completed my first goal is to uh, get the tickets to a world champ and my final goal is to get the champion of this tournament. 
That sounds like a good plan to me. Um, and can you just tell me about that series? Um, it looked very stressful to actually just play as there were some very close moments. Can you just tell me how what it was like to be in that chair playing in that match for your world championship spot? 刚上比赛有很多呃紧张时刻，你们两边选手都非常紧张。那光是坐在上面打比赛，都让人观众感觉到非常紧张刺激。那可以跟大家分享一下你在上面的心情是什么吗？我我刚刚就是就是刚刚也最后也有个那宿舍内战，其实就我很怕他可能可以就是先拒人或者怎么样。我其实我很很紧张，就其实我每一把都很紧张，因为我很害怕还要再去打加赛之类的。就我现在蛮开心的，对。So on、uh, the last was a、uh, World Lock Mirror match. I was pretty scared that he will had an advantage、uh, against me first. So、uh, actually, I was very nervous against against him on every match, and so I'm very happy that I win him. Okay, and、uh, now that you've done what some could argue is the hard part of qualifying to Worlds,、uh, how are you feeling about tomorrow's matches to potentially becoming the championship,、uh, uh, the winner of the Winter Championship? 那你刚刚已经分享过你进呃进世界赛的心得，那有没有关于明天还有接下来的比赛，你有没有什么想法？呃，明天呃，我因为我还不确定，因为我还不知道我打的对手是谁，但我很想要拿到这次的冠军，就跟我采访说的一样，就是我想用最好的成绩，然后前进世界赛。I'm not sure who will we, I be playing against with tomorrow, so、uh, I will just keep working hard and try to、uh, defeat my opponent tomorrow. And just like I said、um, in an interview this time, I will do my best and take the championship of this time. Okay, well, good luck with that, and congratulations once again at the spot in the world championship. We're going to head back over to the desk with all the guys. Thank you very much, Raven. And、uh, what a fun day it's been, but also a heartbreaking day, if you will. This is the post show where we are going to recap and preview of things yet to come because we are 75% done of the very last seasonal championship. Congratulations, TJ.、Uh, actually, it's、uh, more than 75% because there's less matches tomorrow. But I don't think anyone actually knows how many matches there are tomorrow. It's impossible to tell at this point. Well, I do, and I'm going to tell you about it. But first, let's go ahead and check in on the top four bracket. This is the semifinals. Save the date, because tomorrow we're going to crown a winter champion and、uh, declare either Bloody Face, Roger, Jing, or Bunny Hopper as our seasonal victor. Any thoughts about this top four, real quick here, Kibler? Since I know Admiral Dude, we're talking. One thing,、uh, this this actually has one one representative from each of the four regions. We started the first day two 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 and two. Now we got one 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 and one. So we had China leap out, but we've got parity once again in the top four. Yeah, I think the the cool thing is we have seen the aggro lineups have a lot of success.